Hello and welcome. We had a really great IPv6 static route quiz today. Oh my gosh, it was great. Everything was perfect except for I didn't hit the button to record it locally. So I'm going to run through this quiz again myself, just one player me, but I'll have the opportunity then to edit it and present it in a recorded fashion. So as we go through, you can watch the question, get a five second countdown, and then see the answer and then any explanation as well. So enjoy this recorded version of the IPv6 static routing quiz. What happens when LA, which is router one, what happens when that device pings 2020 colon 3333 colon colon three? And here's the play-by-play. -play. If LA right here tries to ping the loopback interface on R3 on Vegas, if we look at that real quick, this is Vegas right here. It's 2020-3333 colon colon, and then it ends with the three as well. So from our ones perspective, if we send a packet to 2020-3333, which direction is it going to go? So here we have a route right there. And it says to get to 2020-3333 with the slash 64-bit mask. Let's go ahead and use the next top of 2020-12 colon colon 2, which is New York. That's New York's address right there. So if we did that and we forwarded the packet, you know, LA says, not my problem. <laughs> I forwarded it. Now it's somebody else's problem. And the problem is with now New York. So New York has to look at its routing table. And here's New York's routing table right here. And it says, okay, to get to the 2020-3333 network, how do I forward? Does not have a specific route anywhere for it. And so it's going to use its default route right there. And that default route says, let me clear that off a little bit. That default route says I should use 2020-12 colon colon 1, which is LA. Oops. So we have a routing loop, and that packet would be forwarded back and forth between R1 and R2 until the TTL expired, at which point the packet would be dropped by the router who sees that TTL expiring. So the answer to this question is that the TTL would expire, and that's because we have a layer three loop in our topology. Okay, there's only five questions. Let's take a look at question number two. Here it is, question number two, multiple select. And here is question number two. Which two routes will allow for full loopback zero to loopback zero routing across all three routers? Also, each of these labs has a corresponding packet tracer lab. So if you want to download those from the keithbarker.com, you can. They're free. And then you can actually lab each of these scenarios up to verify what your determined answers are. And these are the two correct answers. And let's take a look at why. If we're looking for full loopback zero to loopback zero connectivity, let's see what we already have in place. So New York, which is router two, it's got a route to the loopback of router one. It's got a route to the loopback of router three. So R2 doesn't need any configuration or New York doesn't need any configuration change to make this work. However, if we look at LA and Vegas, router one and router three respectively, uh, they don't have all the routes they need. So LA has a route to 2222, which is New York's loopback, and Vegas has a route to 111, which is R1's loopback. However, Los Angeles and Vegas are both missing a route. So basically, we're going to need a static route on Los Angeles, R1, and on Vegas, we'd need a route to get to 2020-2222, and on LA, we'd need a route to go to 2020-3333. So let's take a look at the answers and see what we have. So here on LA, it says to get to the 2020-333 network, use 2020-13 colon colon three. So if this is R1, which is LA, R2 is New York, and R3 is Vegas. This route right here says to get to the 2020-333 network, go ahead and use the next top of 2020-13 colon colon three, which is R3's interface right there. So that's why that's correct. The other missing route was on R3. It didn't have a route to get to 2222. So we made a route that said to get to 2020-2222 slash 64. The next top would be 2020-23.2, which is the interface right here on R2 that is connecting it over to R3. And if you are studying IPv6 static routes and you have a question and you want to follow up and get more information on it, hey, join me for the office hour every Saturday, 10 a.m. on my Discord server, and you can ask away. We'd be more than happy to elaborate and talk about the technology and how it works and why it works and provide examples. So that's a great resource if you ever want to drop in Saturdays at 10 a.m. on the Discord server. That's in Pacific time. All right, let's take a look at the next question. Which routes, if we added them, could provide access to 2023333, and that's a loopback hanging off of R3. And these are the correct two answers right here. 
So if we're trying to provide R1 the routes it needs to get to R3's loopback zero, which is the 2023333 network address space, this sensor says to get to 2023333, use the next hop of 2020.12 colon colon two, which is over here, which is R2. And then from R2's routing table, it has a route to go ahead and forward down to that loopback. Another option that would also work is IPv6 route colon colon slash zero, which is the default route, and use FE80 colon colon two, which is a link local address, once again, of R2. And when you do a link local address, you also need to include the egress or outbound interface because the same link local address could be used on multiple interfaces. So when you use a link local address as the next top, you also want to include the egress or outbound interface it should use for that. And for the answers that were not correct over here, this next top of 2020.12 colon colon three is an invalid IP address between R1 and R2. And over here it has a link local address, but it's not including the egress interface, which is required if you're using a link local address. All right, that is question three of five, two to go. And this is a puzzle. What is the correct syntax or order for an IPv6 static route? All right, and this is the syntax IPv6 route. The network we're trying to reach in this example, we're using a default route with colon colon slash zero, and then the next hop address of the router and the path that we would forward that packet to. Okay, that's question four of five. We have one more to go, and here it is. Last question of this IPv6 static routing, multiple select, double points, and here it is. LA, router one, cannot ping 2020, 23 colon colon two. Which route or routes, and it is multiple select, could provide that ability. And each of these routes are valid and would work in this topology. So here we have R1, R2, and R3. And let me go ahead and color code these based on the answers. So the red answer is saying to get to 2020 colon 23, Use the next top address of the link local address of FE80 colon colon three, that's right here. And the egress interface would be gig zero slash one. So I'll put the red answer right there. That's totally valid. And then R3 is directly connected to that 23 network. So it would be able to forward as well. Here in yellow, the route is saying use gig zero zero FE80 colon colon two, which is this interface right here on R2. So it's including the egress or outbound interface along with that link local address. That's also perfectly valid. And because R2 is directly connected to that 23 network, which goes between R2 and R3, that would work because R2 knows how to get to that network. And let's take a look at blue. And blue says IPv6 route to that network. Use the next top of the globally routable address of 2020 13 colon colon three. So that would also work. And finally, green has a route to that same network using 2020 12 colon colon two, which is the globally routable interface right here on R2. So basically two of these routes, the blue and the red are using R3 as the next top. Two of these routes, the green and the yellow are using R2 as the next top. So in trying to add a route to get to this network, each of those static routes are perfectly valid. Also, I would encourage if you wanna practice any of these, you can download the labs, the packet tracer labs, and just go to that specific lab and add the routes and verify that it can be done. Also, it's great practice with the syntax and verification of IPv6 static routing. And to make sure it's easy for you to get those, if you go to thekeithbarker.com right here and just scroll down, there's a section called free downloads for packet tracer labs. And it is the six pack, the Cisco packet tracer static route quiz six pack. So if you download that, it has the packet tracer labs for each of the four scenarios that were in this set of quiz questions. So you can lab it up, do the show commands and verify it on your own. So that is it for this version of the IPv6 static routing recorded quiz. And I look forward to seeing you, my friend, in the next event. Until then, happy studies and best of success. Bye for now.